Today is the official kickoff to the 2021 fall DIY season here on Whiskey and Wit, and I could not be more excited. So stay tuned for a ton of DIY inspiration to get you ready for fall. Today I am sharing a ton of my favorite fall DIYs that I have ever done to get your creative juices flowing for fall, as well as to give you an idea of what to look out for when you're out shopping at the stores. A ton of these supplies get put out early and they get picked over really fast. So even though you may not be ready for fall, if you plan on DIYing, now's the time to grab that stuff and put it away for when you are gonna be ready. Today's video is also a collab with my dear friend Courtney over at Creative on the Cheap. She does a ton of DIY content as well. You will absolutely love her projects if you haven't been over to her channel yet. I talk about her all the time, so I feel like you probably have, but on the off chance that you haven't, be sure to go over there after this video and check out all of her fall DIY projects and let her know I sent you. And without further ado, let's get into the DIYs. Up first is this sweater pumpkin, and one of the biggest trends for 2021 fall decor is chunky knits. So here's a way that you can dupe that look with Dollar Tree supplies. So I started with one of these foam pumpkins that you can find every year at Dollar Tree. And I started by removing the top little stem and then using a knife to cut out a hole in the top where my yarn was going to eventually be inserted. Then to make sure that I didn't have any orange coloring pop through my light color yarn, I went through with just some chalk paint and covered it. If you're more of a spray paint person, you could absolutely do that here as well. Then I found this yarn last year at Dollar Tree. It's a nice chunky, thick piece of yarn. If you can't find yarn like this or yarn that you like at Dollar Tree, you can find it really inexpensively at Walmart. You can also find it at places like Michael's and Hobby Lobby. So I started by cutting out six pieces that were about 24 inches long, and I decided to take groups of two and braid them into a strand. I started with the first one, braided it down, and then put it over the edge of my pumpkin to make sure it was long enough, and it was. So then I continued on and made 10 of these strands to start with just to see how much I was going to need to cover the pumpkin. It's gonna depend on how thick your strands are for how much you're gonna need to cover the whole pumpkin. Once I had all my strands done, I realized I needed an additional hole in the bottom of my pumpkin, so I just did the same thing I did to the top with the knife, just cut out two holes so I could tuck in the ends of each of my braided strands. And then I went through with a hot glue gun, sticking the top knot in the top of the pumpkin, and then pulling it down the side of the pumpkin, fluffing up my little braided strands so it took up a good amount of space without having too many gaps so you could see through the yarn. Once I got it around to the bottom, I stuck it in that other hole and then glued it so it was going to stay and then trim the ends. If you end up having any weird gaps in between your strands, I just took a couple of my scrap pieces and stuck them in there and you couldn't even tell. Then the last step was to finish off the pumpkin and I did that by inserting one of these Dollar Tree leaves that come in a pack of six or eight. And then I grabbed just a branch from our yard, trimmed off a little piece and stuck it in the top. So that was free. So total this pumpkin cost me $3 and I had a enough left over to make a few more pumpkins. I love this so much and I think I'm definitely gonna make some more in different colors for the 2021 season. Over the past couple years, I've really fallen in love with chalkboard signs for the fall, especially blacks mixed with dark wood tones. And this sign really looks a lot more expensive than a Dollar Tree DIY. So I used one of my favorite pennant signs, but you could use any Dollar Tree sign that you have. It doesn't have to be in this shape, but if it does have glitter on it, you wanna make sure you go through and remove that glitter first so that when you're painting over the top, you don't get any weird textures. Then for this sign, I taped off the top area because I knew I wanted to stain that the dark wood color. And then I also made sure I had some of these ornaments on hand. I was gonna use the pumpkins too, but I ended up just using the leaves. Then I went outside with some dark walnut stain. I stained the top of my sign as well as my four leaves that I was going to put on to my sign. And after that top stain dried, I then followed up with some black paint. I just moved the painter's tape so that the stain didn't get any on it. Then I just cut out a sticker on white vinyl with my Cricut. This is a free cut file, so I will link all the details down below for the cut files that I am sharing. I applied this to the center of the sign. I used a couple of my stained leaves to figure out where I exactly wanted to place it. Mm -hmm. 
And then once my decal was down, it was time to measure and then use my miter box to cut some straight edges on my leaves. I wanted it to look like the leaves were falling, but then also they ended when the sign ended. So some of them I cut larger pieces, other ones I just cut little edges. And then once I had them like I wanted them, I laid them out and then glued them down with some hot glue. The one thing I did wish I did with this sign is fill the holes of the ornaments with wood filler. If I were to do this again, I would definitely do that. So keep that in mind if you want to recreate this. But I love the saying here. I love that it's definitely a fall sign, but it doesn't say fall on it or pumpkin patch. I like looking for things that match my decor, but are a little bit different than what you see in the stores. Gives me a more custom feel that way. Now, if you're a regular over here on Whiskey and White, you're probably shocked it has taken me to get to number three before I showed you any buffalo check, but don't worry, we've got some more coming down the pipe in this video. So these cute little pumpkins are from Dollar Tree Foam Dice. You can find these both in the kids section, but then also right now in the back to school section, they usually have some dice like this for the teachers. So check either of those areas. And the first step was to go through and paint them white. I did four, so two packs of those. Then I mixed a lighter color of orange. So I did just some white and an orange that I had on hand and I painted my stripes for my buffalo check. So I just took a small brush that gave me the ability to paint stripes like this and I painted evenly spaced stripes around one way. So right here is vertical to me as I'm painting. And then once those were done, I went through and did the same thing horizontally. So you're making a large grid on your little pumpkin. Once my grid was painted and dried, I went back through with a smaller brush and the orange that I used, I used the full octane orange, so not the orange mixed with white that I used for the stripes. And I took that darker color and painted squares where my lines overlapped. And that's how you're gonna get that buffalo check effect. Now for the gray one, I did the exact same thing. I did a lighter gray for all of my stripes. And then you can either go back through with a black to create those squares where everything overlaps, or you could go back through with a darker gray like I did here. Now to make them look like pumpkins, I took some Dollar Tree burlap and just cut out some pieces. I just removed the wired piece of the ribbon and cut little leaf shapes to fit the size of those pumpkins. I took a pair of scissors, poked a hole in the top, and then for the little stems I wanted something smaller and I couldn't find a branch so I just took some mulch from our landscaping out front and it worked out perfectly. I added my two cute little leaves with some hot glue and then I tied on a little bit of jute twine to finish off the look. These are really cute on little shelf areas. These would also be really adorable on tiered trays. You could also do a black buffalo check for Halloween. Tons of different options, but these are really easy and the buffalo check is pretty simple to paint by hand as you saw. Up next is a really easy Ray Dunn dupe. I saw these for the first time last year, but now they've come out with a ton more like this for different seasons where it's got the word on a pillar candle. And so I thought I could totally dupe this for much cheaper with the Dollar Tree pillar candles. So I started with a white one, but you could use whatever color they have. I know they have orange now. There's a ton of different options. I liked the white for this one. I went through with some nail polish remover, removed the sticky from the label, and then I cut out Thankful in the font The Skinny, which is free to download and use, so I will link that down below for you if you want to check that out. I ended up making my file seven inches wide or tall if you're looking at it on its side like I did here, and then I finished off the look by adding just some jute twine to the top. What I love about these is they're customizable for every day as well as other holidays. And I cannot tell you how many times I've gotten comments on my Instagram of people asking me where I got the candle. And then I tell them it's just a simple Dollar Tree DIY. If you don't have a Cricut, you could also write on with a Sharpie marker. Here are a couple other options I've done in various videos. I've done Halloween, I've done Christmas, I've done Easter and spring. So there's a ton of different options of what you can do with these candles for only a dollar. This next one is a really fun take on farmhouse beads. Now I have a ton of wood beads throughout my house, but I wanted to use some of these create your own ornaments, which I love to use, and also some pearls from Dollar Tree to create a different look. 
So I took some yarn, also from Dollar Tree, and a variety of different sized pearls. You want to make sure you check them in the Dollar Tree aisle before you buy them. Some of them don't come with holes in them as beads, so you want to make sure you are getting the pearl beads, because if they don't have holes, it won't help you with this. I went through and strung a bunch of beads. I ended up doing all the same size for this particular one, but you could do different patterns with small and large, which you'll see I did on one of these. But then I just tied one of my ornaments, which was stained with dark walnut, pretty simple. You could also paint them. And then to create a tassel, I wrapped around my hand about 50 times some yarn. Then I cut a smaller piece to string through the top and tie to create the main body of my tassel. I took one more piece of yarn, tied it around the top to create the head of the tassel, and then trimmed the bottom edges to create the fringe. Then I attach that to the end of my strand. Then to finish it off, I added a fun little touch of buffalo check, because if you know at this point, buffalo check is basically my blood type. And it's that simple. These look really fun. I like that they're a little bit different than the traditional wood beads. The white and the dark wood stain goes really well with my pops of orange, which is how I decorate. And the buffalo check ties into my buffalo check pumpkins and my other buffalo check decor that I've got for fall. Overall pretty easy under five dollars for a DIY and you could make these in honestly under 30 minutes minus the time that it takes for your stain to dry. This banner I absolutely love. It's one of my favorites that I have ever done and it came from one of our mystery box challenges last year and I was challenged to use one of these Dollar Tree burlap banners and so I decided to paint it buffalo check. So to do that I went through and started by doing some white chalk paint and dry brushing that on my pieces of my banner and then I let those dry. You want to make sure that you're dry brushing and not gobbing on the paint because it will get chunky and it won't look good. So you want to make sure you're dry brushing. So you want a half to a third of what you would normally do on your paintbrush. Then it was time to paint the stripes of our buffalo check. So my technique, if you've been around before, you've heard me talk about this time and time again, but we're going to do evenly spaced vertical stripes and then do the same dry brushing technique of a gray color. You're gonna let that dry and then you're gonna carefully peel back your painter's tape. You can use masking tape, washi tape, really whatever you have on hand. You just want to make sure that you don't rip it off like a band-aid too much because you could potentially grab one of those little frayed ends of your burlap and ruin the whole thing. So being careful is key. Then you're going to repeat the same process but horizontally. So I did the same three stripes plus a little bit at the bottom and went through with that same gray paint. Now after that dries, you're going to want to put your pieces of tape from your first round, so your vertical stripes, back right where they were, so right over those lighter stripes. And you see me peeling it up here, that's how I was able to see where they were originally. Since this video, I have started marking my lines, so right right on the painter's tape where those lines were before you paint, and it'll make life so much easier for you. Or you can peel it up like I did, whichever you prefer. But then I went through and peeled back all of that painter's tape again carefully after I had painted all of my black squares and voila! I repeated that on all of my other pieces of banner and I reused a lot of that painter's tape because it doesn't have to be super sticky for this and it will cut down on waste. Then my final step was to hang the banner where I wanted it to go so that I could get everything spaced evenly. I spaced my little pennants and then I just took the hooks from those cute little Dollar Tree leaves and I just hung them over the jute. You could hook them on if you want, but it was a lot easier for me to just hang it over and it stayed all season long. I love this. Again, buffalo check and neutrals are so my vibe for fall and this makes my mantle look extremely festive and I love it. I can't wait to put this up this year. And if you love buffalo checking your decor as much as I do, you can use that technique on a ton of different things. If you have watched my videos before, you know I like to buffalo check on everything. And so this pumpkin also came from the mystery box challenge. I ended up covering the spaced out sign with just some burlap I got from this Dollar Tree messenger bag. But you could use this as inspiration for any sign or little 
trinkety thing like this at Dollar Tree to turn it into a Buffalo Check fall item. I ended up covering this with burlap because one, I wanted to use it for the mystery box and two, I wanted to give it some texture. Dollar Tree has a variety of burlap things that you could use on signs or you could just go ahead and paint this directly on your sign. So I started with a base coat of white and then followed the same process I did on that banner. So starting with vertical stripes evenly across the item, then I painted those with a gray. Wait for it to dry, peel those off, do the horizontal stripes the same way, and then replace your vertical pieces of tape back where it originally was. You can peel it up if you need to figure out where that is. Once you have your grid, go through and paint those with black paint and then peel off your tape and voila. To finish off this pumpkin look, I used a, another twig from my yard. I love to use just twigs I find in the yard because they're free and it gives that kind of rustic nature look you like to have in the fall. And then I followed up with just some pieces of the Dollar Tree nautical rope and then I cut some more burlap little leaves for my pumpkin. I like that this shape is a little different than your traditional pumpkin. It's nice to add some different texture and different prints to my fall vignettes. Another non-traditional pumpkin that I love is this one with Dollar Tree's wired jute cord. I got two of these spools of wired jute twine and I cut about six inches off of each piece. With the remaining wired jute, I wrapped it around something cylindrical. This, I happened to just use a container of chalk paint. And then I took that little six inch piece and wrapped it around the center and then unraveled it just like a slinky. Repeat the same process for your second container of the wired jute to create the second half of your pumpkin. And then I used those center pieces to kind of wrap everything around and join them together. Finish it off with one of my handy dandy yard twigs and some additional leaves. And you've got a really cute deconstructed, kind of modern and rustic at the same time pumpkin. I think this is so cute and I might make some more for my decor for this year. So are you thinking of changing up your decor, but you need some items dirt cheap? Well, here is a Dollar Tree pumpkin hack that will be easy to do for whatever your color scheme or style. You're gonna start with a Dollar Tree foam pumpkin and a fabric of your choice. You can get these at Dollar Tree, you could do Walmart, you could just do a canvas pumpkin. There's a ton of different options you could do. Just cut a little hole in the top of your foam pumpkin and then start tucking your fabric into the hole. I kind of worked my way around creating pleats as I went and tucking everything into the pumpkin. You might have to do a little finagling, but once you're all done, you have a really easy buffalo check pumpkin. I just inserted a small little piece of mulch in mine as well as a Dollar Tree leaf and it was done. If you wanna hack it even further with items you have in your house, you could do it with a roll of toilet paper. You've probably seen this on Pinterest. It's super easy to do. I just like to take off a little bit from the roll and put it back on to make it a little bit bulkier. So it's not just a straight cylinder. Then I went through the same tucking process with my Buffalo check, added some mulch and a leaf and done. These are really nice to fill areas. And the other nice thing is I do this in my spare bathroom, especially with the toilet paper. And then you can absolutely use the toilet paper when you're done. So it's a great way to store your back stock and make it look festive. I really love taking Dollar Tree items and just making a couple tweaks to them and you can make them look super high end. I wanted to create a tablescape for our dining room for the fall and these plates were perfect. So these are just little appetizer plates from Dollar Tree customized with a quick little decal that said thankful. You can pick whatever font that you want. Just measure the width of your plate and go ahead and apply it. Because I wasn't gonna use these plates for food, I didn't worry about having to seal it or anything. You could use a water-based sealer to seal over the top, but I just, like I said, was just gonna use it for decor. I added this to my nice plates we got for our wedding. These came from Macy's. I just added a quick little Buffalo check napkin from Hobby Lobby and my plate. You could also add some additional color in there if you want. Your napkin can really be what fits your decor. 
Up next is a cute little personalized family pumpkin patch sign. So this is made of a pumpkin cutout. They've got a few different ones each year, so whichever one you can find, as well as some of those color your own ornaments in the pumpkins. So I went through with my dark walnut stain and stained the large pumpkin and painted the small pumpkins with just an orange acrylic paint. Then I wrapped the top with some jute twine to add a little bit of texture and to add in a little bit of that rustic feel. Then I added our family names, so Alex, my husband, my name, and Finn's name, my son. And this is a super cute little sign. The welcome to our little pumpkin patch is a free download, so you can grab that over on my blog, which will be linked down in the description. And you could create this for your family as well. If you don't want to go the personalized route, I also have this file that's welcome to our pumpkin patch. These go really well in the Dollar Tree houses, or if you find some of the little square signs, you could put it on a pumpkin and do that for a tiered tray as well. So a ton of different options just by adding some vinyl to those cute little ornaments. This next one I really love and it was part of my Kirkland's dupe video last year. That video is full of a ton of inspiration that didn't make it into this video. So I will link that for you if you want to check it out. This started with inspiration from Kirkland's and it was $70 almost for those sets. So I decided to dupe it with some painting sticks. You can get these for 99 cents at Home Depot. Once you decide how tall you want your pumpkin to be, you're gonna cut eight pieces at the same length. After you have your eight pieces, you're gonna take two of them and cut alternating 45 degree angles on the top and the bottom. Those are gonna be the ends of your pumpkin. Just make sure you pay attention to which side has the ruler on it because you'll want that to be on the back so you don't have the ruler on the front of your pumpkin. You'll just have the unfinished wood. After that, I had to cut a couple more pieces. I had to cut one piece the width of all eight of those pieces so that I could brace the back of it. I had to cut one the same length as that back brace for the bottom. And then I also had to cut a little piece with a 45 degree angle at the top for my stem. Once everything was cut, I gave it a good sand and then my pumpkin plus the back brace got a coat of orange paint. And then when that was dry, I went through with a hot glue gun and assembled everything. Once my pumpkin was assembled, I added a metal word from Dollar Tree that said thankful. And then I decided to stain both the stem top of my pumpkin as well as the little stand at the bottom. So then I added both of those pieces with hot glue to finish off the look. I made sure to add some additional hot glue on the back just to make sure that my sign would stay in place, but all of the hot glue you wouldn't really see because it'd be hidden by the painter sticks. After adding some jute twine and some cute little leaves, my pumpkin was ready to be displayed. All things considered, I was able to make this for four bucks compared to the $65 that the two pack from Kirkland's ran. So I think this is a DIY win. This next one is a super fun pumpkin sign that I made from some of these Dollar Tree larger pumpkins that they have had for, I swear, the past five years. I hope they don't get rid of them because they are great to DIY with. So I started first by taking the larger pumpkin and putting it in my miter box and cutting it in half. It actually cuts pretty easily in a miter box, which is awesome because then that means there's a ton of different possibilities that you can use it for took two of those and cut them in half so that I had four pieces total and then I wanted to get the sticker off so I just used my heat gun and my little Cricut spatula to easily get them off. Once I did that, I wanted to remove both of the stems because I cut them in half. I had two with stems, two without. And so I thought I could take the stems out and essentially cut them in half to make two stems out of one. Once I got the stems out, I painted all of them a orange color, but you could do this in white. You could do this in a green color. There are a lot of different possibilities. And then I took some brown paint and created some lines to give it more of a look of a pumpkin. Once my little pumpkins were dry, I used these Dollar Tree letter stickers as stencils. So I went through and found F-A-L-L, -L, or I guess F-A-L, and used the same one twice for my four pumpkins. And I'm cutting around the outside of the letter, so then that way I can create a stencil. Once I did that, I stuck it onto my pumpkins where I wanted it. I just discarded the inside sticker because I didn't need that. And then I used some painter's tape to mark off any areas that I didn't want to get paint on. 
Then I went through with a nutmeg brown color to stencil in the letters. And then I went in and touched up any areas that I needed to fix. I liked the understated kind of nutmeg brown color versus a white or a black. But again, this is just inspiration. So you could customize it any way you want. You could have it say autumn. If you get more pumpkins, there's a ton of different options. After my paint was dry, I just went through with a little bit of sandpaper and roughed it up so it looked a little bit more worn and like it had been there all along. And then my last step was to add in the top parts of each pumpkin, as well as some jute twine and some smaller leaves. I just took my miter shears and cut my tops of my pumpkins in half. So then I went from two stems to four and it worked out just fine. Then I hot glued my little leaves as well as my stems and the jute twine onto the top. And then I hot glued in an alternating front and back pattern my pumpkins together so it was all one unit. I've got some really short shelves all over my house and so this is the perfect size to go on it. Such cute little pumpkins and they add some pizzazz. You could also do jack-o'-lanterns with this if you are a Halloween fan. So I just think this project is so versatile, especially when you think about all you can do with cutting apart those Dollar Tree pumpkins. Buckets like these can go for a ton of money at places like Kirkland's, even Hobby Lobby buckets are expensive, but here's how you can dupe it for Dollar Tree prices. So right now they have summer stuff out. So grab some flower buckets like this and you can easily remove the letters with some nail polish remover. You just wanna make sure the letters aren't raised because that you won't be able to get off. Then I just cut out a little decal on my Cricut, just on some black vinyl that said handpicked Farm Fresh Pumpkins, $5 a pound. And I applied that to the outside of my bucket. I want to make it look a little bit more worn and a little bit more kind of vintage, I guess. So I just took some brown paint in the color Nutmeg Brown and a little cotton ball and just rubbed it around both the top and the bottom to kind of mimic a rust color. You're just looking for a little dusting of the color and it's gonna make it look a little bit more worn. I added some lamb's ear as well as some Dollar Tree pumpkins and it turned out super cute. And if you can't find an actual metal bucket, don't worry, you can just dupe it. So this is actually a plastic bucket that I painted to look like metal. So I started by spray painting my black container with a coat of white spray paint just to neutralize that black color. It doesn't have to be fully covered, but you do wanna make sure that it is kind of grayish like this. And then I went through with a makeup sponge and started with a coat of gray paint. I would say this is kind of a medium gray and I'm just dabbing up and down with paint on top of the bucket. You want it to look uneven because that's going to make it look galvanized. And also shout out to Yami, the Latina next door. I learned this technique from her. So be sure to check out her channel if you haven't already. But thank you to Yami for teaching me this sweet trick. I've done it a few times and I love it. Once your whole bucket is covered with that first layer of the gray paint, then you're gonna go back in with a darker gray. So here I am just going about eh, three or so shades darker. It's actually like a gunmetal gray and go through and add about half of the amount of paint. And then you're gonna go through again with another sponge with just some metallic. And I like this cause it gives it a little bit of shine. And when you're looking at it, it doesn't look just like painted plastic. So then once your bucket's done, it's gonna look like this. And I decided for this particular one to try Dollar Tree's rub-on transfers. So I found all the letters that I need to do Farm Fresh Pumpkins. I laid it out and then I followed the instructions on the pack to apply them to the bucket. They were super easy to do and it's awesome as an alternative for somebody that doesn't have a Cricut. If you do have a Cricut, obviously you could create your own decal for that or use the free one from the project before. Then I used some tape to create a grid and then to create a faux floral arrangement with some Dollar Tree florals. I like doing the grid because it helps everything kind of stay sitting up like this instead of all falling over on each other. I like the size of the bucket and I really like these oranges. Some of Dollar Tree's fall florals are not the greatest, but if you go through and look, you can find some really great ones and create a really stunning display. 
Now I know this one's Halloween, but I want to stretch you and your imagination to think of what you could do for this for fall. So this is another mystery box, random assignment that I got. And I got these blocks from Crafter Square, these square ones. So I thought, let's make these into some beads and make a beaded garland. So I just took some pliers or this wrench that clamped down. You could also use some clamps if you have those and just don't use your hand to hold it while you're drilling. I just wanted something to keep my hand away for safety reasons. So I went through and drilled a hole about the size of the jute twine or whatever I was going to string them up with. Then I had to use this little dollhouse table. So I popped off the legs as well as the items on the back to create a little tag that I could put on the end of my beaded strand. I painted my table black and then I did some white, some orange and some black little beads. And the white ones were actually gonna be turning into Buffalo check. I did my wet paint technique to essentially kind of dye these versus painting them, but you could paint them whatever process that you like. But I just evenly spread out all of my beads to do an even number of orange, black, and the white. Then once everything was dry, I took my white ones and some gray paint and I did the same process that I did earlier on those pumpkins. So I did a grid on either side. And then once the grid was done, I took my black paint and filled in the areas where they overlapped with some black. Then to string them up, I just took some tape, just regular old scotch tape, put it on the end of my jute twine and created a pointed edge so that it would make it easier to string up my little beads. If you struggle with the beads, I ended up drilling a little bit bigger of a hole and that worked out a lot easier. So I just kind of made my pilot hole a lot bigger. And then I strung them up in a pattern, orange, black, orange, and then the buffalo check, but you could do natural orange buffalo check. There's a ton of different ways you could do this. And really what I have thought to do this on my own if I wasn't challenged with the mystery box, probably not, but it's a fun take on some beads. Then I just made a tassel like I did before. So wrap it around my hand 50 times, tie one half of your little circle, then take a piece, tie it around the top for the head of your tassel, and then cut the ends for the fringe. Once I was done with my tassel, I attached that to the one end and then I drilled a hole and attached my tabletop to the other end. And then because I did a Halloween motif, I put Hocus Pocus on the little tag in the font Amatic, which is kind of a Ray Dunn dupe. And here's how they turned out. I really love these. I think I might make a set of regular ones for my fall decor versus just Halloween, but I've got some other cute Halloween projects. So if you're a Halloween fan, I will link my Halloween playlist down below as well. This doormat is a Dollar Tree hack all around. I've got a few different tips for you on this one. So I grabbed just a regular old Dollar Tree mat that you can usually find, and I cut out my stencil on some Dollar Tree contact paper. You could save a ton of money by using it. I just cut it down to my mat and cut it in my Cricut, and then I went through and weeded it. I placed everything manually because it's pretty easy to work with on to my rug. And then I put in all the inners of letters and all of that. So inside of O's or E's. Then I just went through with a disposable makeup sponge and did everything black with some acrylic paint except for my orange little pumpkin. And then I peeled it off and it worked super well. The last step here is to just spray it with a sealer because it's gonna be outside. So I just used a water-based polycrylic. I like the Minwax brand, I'll link it down below. And it's super cute. This would also look really nice on top of a Buffalo Check larger rug, or you could put that on top of a like one of those, I don't know what they're called, but like the scratchier ones to be able to clean off your shoes. And you've got a really quick and easy $1 personalized doormat. All right, number 18, you know the drill. We are approaching the end. I've got three more projects. So leave a fall emoji. You could do a leaf or something. If you don't have emojis, just put the word acorn. We'll see if we confuse some people, but let me know you're still with me. So we're gonna use those Dollar Tree pumpkins again and chop them in half again, but this time we're just gonna use them as regular signs. 
So you can paint them whatever color. I did some in white, some in orange, and I also left one large to show you how you can just make it over if you don't want to cut it in half. Then I went through and gave it those same lines that I did on my fall multi-pumpkin sign just to give it some dimension, just some kind of ovally looking shapes. And I did that with a gray paint on the white one. And then I just used some more of those transfers. Those things are awesome if you don't have a Cricut because you can get the wording on things and they've got a lot of different fonts. Every time I go to Dollar Tree, they've got new ones every time. But I did a Hello Fall and a Harvest and then finished those off the same way that I did the other ones with some jute twine and some little leaves. We are not done with those pumpkins yet. Here is another idea with those because I wanted to share it with you guys because there are so many of these usually at the store and this is stuff you can usually find. So for this one, you don't have to grab the white ones. I just lucked out that they had the ivory one. So I popped off all the raffia and gave all four of them a coat of white Waverly chalk paint just to cover up the wording on the front. Then to give it a little texture, I used this Hobby Lobby burlap that you can get all the time it's one of those all year round things and I cut off the sides to fit as well as the top and the bottom so I could pull off some of the little wispy frays so that it looked a little more rustic used a couple dabs of hot glue in the corners to glue it down after I did that to all four I just cut out the letters for fall on my Cricut but you could trace and cut them out by hand they're pretty simple letters and this is scrapbook paper that I found in the Target dollar spot, which is awesome. They usually have a ton of affordable options when it comes to cute scrapbook paper each year. After those were cut out, I just stuck them down with some more hot glue and these are super cute. Another variation if you are a Buffalo Check fan like me. And number 20, here is a, another Cricut hack that I shared last year and you guys loved it. I got a ton of comments on this. So I took a Dollar Tree regular mug and I wanted to add this really fun kind of autumn sayings decal, but I wanted to try something that was a little bit more durable, if you will, versus just doing the permanent vinyl. So I took my mug and I cut out my design on heat transfer vinyl versus the adhesive vinyl so this is your iron-on and you have to use a heat source to transfer it so I cut it out and weeded it just like I would when I put it on a shirt and remember when you're cutting this out you're cutting it out backwards so then that way you can put it on the correct way once everything was weeded I took my mug and I used a heat gun that I got from Michaels and I applied a lot of heat onto it then I just took a towel and added some pressure so that that would hook it to the mug. It took me about three or four times of adding heat and pushing down the towel, but it finally got everything on there and I was able to peel off my carrier sheet and have a really fun mug that is both neutral but also super festive to both use as well as to put on tiered trays. Yeah, we made it through all 20 projects. Thank you so much for sticking with me. Also, if this wasn't enough for you, I've got a ton more projects. So I will link my full fall playlist down below if you want to keep trucking and get into the fall spirit. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to let me know your favorite project down in the comments and also let me know when do you start DIYing for fall? Do you usually do early like now or August, September? Thanks again to Courtney for collabing with me on this video. I will link her video down below. Be sure to go check that out next. And if you're new, be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss a future Whiskey and Whip video. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.